podcast by comics. I'm your host, Erie Diamond. Hi! Please welcome Charity Palmery and uh, Sergio Novoa, who's going to be here in just a minute. Let's get started. I poppy, yes. <laughs> Whenever Grimes sees Sergio, he always goes, I poppy. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's um, so welcome, welcome. Um, I want to get started with uh, our guest chair. Oh, and by the way, welcome Deneen and Jason. Hello, guys, our regular followers. We love you. And Ellie and Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining in. And of course, my dad, who always joins in. <laughs> Yeah, you know, <laughs> he's my dad. What are you gonna do? Um, <laughs> he joins in no matter what. <laughs> it's part of the dad code. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay, so Charity, um, introduce yourself. A little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about what's up with you. Uh, my name is Charity Pomeroy. Um, I am in Alaska. I moved really? here. Uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> this is the town. This is What's the entire the town. town. Uh, it's a uh, one mile by four blocks down by the water, two blocks a little further up. It's tiny. Uh, and it's been really tiny these days because we can't drive out because the only road out goes to Canada and they think we are filthy, disgusting, uh, virus laden, <laughs> uh, just varmints. Uh, so that's that's been interesting. So I have been literally in this little tiny valley for What's uh, the since the town that you're in. The name of the town is Skagway. Oh, I, I, I've been there. You have? What? On a, you know, the cruises, the cruises. Yes, our, it. our <laughs> bread and butter. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I moved up here. I, I bought a, a theater and our audiences are made up of people who come here on cruise ships because other than cruise ships it's very very hard to get here cruise ships uh, come right here i just looked you up and uh -huh. you have a population as of 2019 of 1059 people yeah Damn, it, we've that's... lost about 400 holy shit <laughs> high school has as many people had as many people as are in your entire town yeah that's wow insane to me um Wow. Okay, so tell me about the theater that you bought. It's uh, it, it's so magical. It uh, it was a, a hotel that was slapped up to be some temporary building in 1898, um, and dance hall and hotel and and uh, for the Klondike Gold Rush. And then uh, in 1920, the, the townsfolk here had nothing going on except some cruise ships coming up because they've been coming here since the 1880s. And so they they wanted to earn some money. So the town said, "Hey, let's put on a show," <laughs> and uh, it took off from there. So that show, uh, up until last year, had been running every single year since 1923. Wow! So that was the first year we didn't have the show. Uh, just the, right after I bought it. Hmm? Your Darn. Theater. We are Gold Rush Productions. The theater is the FOE Theater. Um, and yeah, it's it's super cute, but it it's it's uh, styled after the 1898 dance halls because that's what people knew of. So we have uh, a surrounding balcony upstairs and then we've built great seating, but it was just flat seating because it was normal for people to just stand around the outsides back in those days and you'd have the show in the middle, which just sounds really fun to me, but. Oh, okay, okay. I have so many questions. First of all, <laughs> um, how did you end up in Skagway, Alaska? Were you lost? I, yeah, you know, it truly a wrong turn. <laughs> <laughs> I came up here because uh, the opportunity to buy this show and buy this production company uh, came up and I couldn't pass it up. Uh, it, it had come up more than a decade ago when I was a very poor starving artist and uh, I thought, well, if ever in my life it comes up again, I will move heaven and earth 
to buy it. And so I happened to be in a good position. <laughs> so, oh. yeah. So you went, out. Um, Cause you were, you were from the Bay area, right? I mean, that's where, that's where you were located. Yeah. I actually, I moved there from here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> all coming together. It's all coming together now. Okay. Uh, so you were from there, you moved here and then that's, that's how you found out of, okay, that's yeah. cool. You have family there or? No, I'm not from here either. Oh, I'm so sorry. My life is uh, crazy. Uh, I'm from nowhere. I grew up just moving and moving and moving. I, my mom um, was not in the military, but she had an aversion to paying rent. So we just kept moving and moving <laughs> and moving. I mean, don't we all? Uh, I, I get it. I, I sympathize. So I lived everywhere. And then I, I decided to become a dancer and an actor and I I booked a show uh, one year when I was living in New York and the show was just in Alaska and I thought, wow, that's cool. So I came up here for the show and and then the show was over and I left and thought nothing of it until six months later when I couldn't think of anything else. And so uh, I had booked another show. It was amazing. I loved it. It was the best cast, the best contract. And I couldn't stop thinking of here. So I quit that show. <laughs> it's really stupid. Uh, and moved up here and, and then lived here and would just um, commute to do shows. <laughs> so tell me, you were a dancer. Tell me about that. What, what, um, what, tell me, I, I don't know any of this part of your life. You, you were, know. <laughs> after you were a dancer. I don't know. All I know you from is comedy. And so that's yeah. why, yeah. Yeah, comedy was uh, something I'd always thought of doing, but I, I did musical theater. That's what my degree is in, and that's what I did for years and years, uh, theater and musical theater. And yeah, and uh, that's, yeah, it's really funny when, um, honestly, I got into comedy because I moved to the Bay Area with my then wife, and um San Francisco has theaters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. It's mm -hmm. true. That is not just a myth. <laughs> yeah. Most of the uh, union theaters in San Francisco hire exclusively from outside. And uh, that was really bizarre to me. Um, well, I actually know about that because my best friend um, was... Uh, uh, the props master on Beach Blake at Babylon. And so um, for 19 years, and he, um, he, he knew about that because a lot of the actors would try and go and do other shows on their off time and stuff. And it was, it was pure union. It was all union. So it was very difficult to get any work in any other space. So um, that's, yeah, it's kind of stupid actually, when you think about it. Um, really but, weird. Um, but I love the story of now you own a theater and yeah. that's terrific. Tell, tell, please tell everybody some of the people that you've booked. I'm very excited. You guys are reopening next month. We are reopening a show a month from today. We have cast uh, two people. <laughs> we have a third. Uh, we've cast four people uh, and we have our final person to cast. It's just a small show um, and we're so excited. We've been working on it uh, fixing every little thing that bothered us in the script, uh, with the costumes, with the set. We've had this entire year to make it the most spectacular goddamn thing you've ever seen <laughs> in Skagway, Alaska. So, uh, we're so excited. And this year we also, um, they had been hiring really young and we wanted to change that. And we thought, well, we'll, we'll work a plan where we can uh, transition into hiring people with more experience. Um, and, uh, and that was our transition last year. So this year we've hired all, uh, I say our age, my, my business partner is in her late thirties and then I am in my mid forties. So um, yeah, we're all seasoned uh perfect. I like so the word that's a nicer way to put than old because I yeah. <laughs> yeah. a seasoned lady. Um yeah. 
Uh, and you Lisa. were saying you have David Sedaris is gonna, you have him booked for, I, I love David Sedaris. Um, love David Sedaris. Um, yeah. This is the second time in my life I've booked him for a theater. <laughs> so I'm really happy. Uh, so yeah, we have a, a, a big burlesque touring company coming up here uh, in a couple months that we've booked. And then um, next uh, May, <laughs> May 17th of next year, we have David Sedaris coming in. So that so far, that's all we have booked, but we're going to you know, the only here. thing better than David Sedaris is Amy Sedaris. So just so you know, um, <laughs> that's really the only thing better. Um, um, I'll work on that. Sergio, hello, my love. How are you? I'm good. Back in San Francisco, as you can tell. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> and what a beautiful view that is you're sitting in front of. So are you here right now? Are you in the no, Bay Area right now? I will be in the no. Bay Area July 23rd fourth nice. and driving up really early on the 25th to come back. Nice, so, nice. Yeah. So, uh, Sergio, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm a Christian woman. No, okay, you look at <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, oh, a little bit about me, what do you want to know? I joined a kickball league in LA to make friends and it turned out to be one of the best things I've done. I've met so many people. Um, this is our team shirts, which I designed myself. Mm -hmm. Love it. <laughs> There's so many things wrong with that statement. Um, <laughs> I didn't know there was a kickball league. Um, out there is. I had no clue. That is very interesting. And uh, but you were also your comedian, and you're also a producer of comedy. Um, yeah. You, you came on like, like a force when you started doing comedy show. It wasn't. No, the rest of us are out here just doing comedy and then we're like, oh, I got a show. And then like, we have one show, we have maybe two shows. Sergio came out like fucking five shows all at once, gangbusters, like insane. One time I was booked on two of his shows on the same night, just got in the car, drove to the next show, did that show. I mean, I've never seen anything like that. You came on so hard. It was well, that sounds a little dirty, but you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not used to women saying that to me, but okay. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> um, usually it's, you came on so hard to that guy. It would have been the last, yeah, that would have been the next okay. That's a good finish to that statement. Um, right. <laughs> let's, yeah, I mean, I honestly had no intention. I decided to do comedy. I tend to be OCD about things. And I also, when I do things, I like to apply myself 100%. So if something doesn't work out, I can say, you know, I gave him my all, I guess it's not meant to be. So that's how that came about. And once I started doing shows, I started seeing things on stage that I thought these lineups are not representing the group of people that I know, mm -hmm. the perspectives I hear. So one of the rules that I made for myself was I wanted equal representation gender wise, only factoring male and female. I know there's a lot of other ways to categorize things when it comes to gender identity. Uh, and then with that, I wanted to ref the lineups to reflect people that I encounter in day-to-day -day life. You know, like I know friends that are young, old, married, children, single, sluts, you know. <laughs> Wait, what? what was that last <laughs> Oh, and that's when you started booking me. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I just, it, I think it was five months into me doing comedy that I decided to do my first show. And uh, I also wanted to have a well-rounded knowledge of being in front of the stage, behind the stage, producing, booking, and you learn a lot. You learn a lot about people's personalities and try to manage that as best as you can without losing your temper. Uh, but yeah, it was, yeah, very, you know, three years, it's been three years already that I've been doing comedy. Wow. So oh, wow. yeah, I know it seemed like yesterday, but I'll be back in the Bay Area on the 24th of 23rd of July. And um, my show will be will continue. Knock on wood, it continues to be a success. Um, and I started producing a show here in LA. So, yeah. And I'm performing tonight. So. <laughs> Yay! Um, so I uh, I have so many questions for you. Um, how long did you were you living in the Bay Area before you moved out to LA? I lived in the Bay Area for 32 years. Oh, so you're from here? Okay. Almost. I'm, I'm, I'm older than I look. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, which is good. 
It's always yeah. good. Um, <laughs> so, okay. So you, okay. So you were living here for a long time and then you moved out to LA. Um, so, okay, hold on a sec. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm multitasking also the tech person on the show. So I am also doing that. <laughs> So you moved out to LA, comedy's going well out there. You have a show out there now. Um, how are you feeling about the LA scene? Uh, it's a lot harder here in the sense that there are so there are so many comedians. Yeah. I mean, in San Francisco, we would complain about getting to milk bars. Like, oh man, I'm 25. Yeah, you're like 75 and there's like 200 people in the room. So wow. on, on that end, it's, um, it's a lot more saturated. Sat saturated? Is that the word? Uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Saturated. Saturated. <laughs> I did Tiki style classes. I do. I can't formulate a sentence. Um, <laughs> there, are, there are people who are like really good that it's just inspiring to see someone structure a joke so well. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are people that are just like, oh, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> having a little more knowledge now of the structure of a joke, I'm like, oh, it's okay, good. You're gonna go with that. Knock yourself out. Um, <laughs> But it is, uh, yeah, it's it's also a rude awakening from the Bay Area because I've done plenty of shows where I don't get paid at all. You're just lucky you're getting stage time. And as a booker in the Bay Area, people asking for a certain amount of money and like, I won't perform unless I headline. And it's like, good luck with that when you get here. I want to see how that works out for you. Because uh, yeah. it's a different animal. It's like, you're lucky if you have a show, you know, no one gets paid. Uh, but I, I did pay my comics because I wanted to keep that rule. Um, so, yeah. Interesting. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting because unknowingly, I, I booked you and Charity. And you and Charity are on completely different ends of the comedy world right now. <laughs> Charity lives somewhere where there's like 600 people live there, live there in her town. Um, <laughs> and you live somewhere where there's like a million, two million, three million people and half of them are comics um, living in your town. So this is very interesting dynamic. Um, uh, wow. Um, okay. It took me a half hour to drive eight miles. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like to me. I was like, True. I have to be at home by six o'clock, eight miles. I'm good. I left at 530. I left at <laughs> oh my God, it's 550. I'm still three miles I, away. I want you to know that I know all about LA traffic because I grew up in Palm Springs, California, and uh, me and my four other um, Death Rocker friends would jump into a car after school. Uh, my favorite story is we jumped into a Chevette, crammed in there, three people in the back, one, 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 and it was, uh, and our hair, of course, we had huge hair, and we were all gothed out, and we, um, we're, we're like hair is like against the window and we're in traffic for like three hours. Like we were doing great right up until we got there. And then it was like, it took us like two hours just to go like, like you said, like 10 miles. And people are like, what is, it was like a fishbowl of death rockers in there. Just like, <laughs> like just makeup and just scrunch and yeah. And then, but I have to say that was the, best alien sex fiend concert i've ever seen in my whole life but um probably don't know who alien sex fiend is but jason knows <laughs> um oh my god jason there was no stage they 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 played at the um that club in la scream that goth club in la scream no stage he uh nick fiend stood on a chair a folding chair and sang the whole thing and he dropped like six hits of acid while he was yeah it was the best show ever anyway anyway i digress um so uh it's pride month and um i know y'all are uh in you know y'all are in the gay thing you're all the gay and um i think it's a face i think i'm gonna cheerful bride and y'all y'all are in the gay and um i'm wondering I wanted to ask, like, has it ever been an issue at all in, in the comedy world? That's, I'm kind of curious about that. Um, Charity, have you ever run into that? I mean, I know you're mostly in theater and stuff, but when you were doing comedy and stuff, was that ever an issue at all? Uh, I wish it would have been more of an issue. I wish uh, all the slimy uh, straight dudes would leave me alone <laughs> in comedy. Didn't matter that I would be, my whole set would be about how I'm a lesbian and they'd still be 
uh, a, a bit slimy that way. But luckily, I think the Bay Area is so, I mean, it's so inclusive. This last year I've done, as we all have, all comedy on Zoom. Uh, I mean, hallelujah for me <laughs> up here in Alaska that there were so many Zoom shows and uh, I could keep it going. Um, and it, it's been funny doing these shows around the country and and having the reactions, not just from the audience, but from the other comics. Um, yeah, uh, it's like, oh, you, you, you don't hang out with gay people? <laughs> <laughs> this is something abnormal in your world. So not so much in the Bay Area, but definitely some of the shows I did this last year. I, uh, I got very weird feedback from other comics or hosts. Uh, like uh, what? I want to know what, like what? Like, I'm glad um, I, I do, first of all, I do think that is really weird because I've heard your set and you talk about girlfriends and stuff like that and they're still getting hit on are you out of your fucking mind oh yeah yeah that's no straight men straight <sighs> men oh, <stupid. laughs> what are you gonna do <laughs> they're terrible i had a question so then what i'm just curious um what is the gay scene in skagway or and or alaska Skagway is no, those, those, gayest. Those four, is it? It is the gayest. Uh, we. Wow. I just did my cool. first professional drag show last night. Uh, awesome. L. Ron Rubhard, uh, with a tra touring um, professional drag company, and I, I submitted for it, and they accepted, and I had to go big. Wow, awesome. <laughs> so I could play with the big boys and girls. Um, and this is, um, it's an Alaska based company, uh, but they tour, they tour the West coast. They tour right now. They're touring Alaska. They're really cool. But I know, um, the, the person who started it, I, I believe, uh, is from LA and that's when he, he moved up here for love. <laughs> and stayed because it's so gay up here. So no. we've, are, we're having this giant uh, pride weekend. It started on my birthday on the 24th and it just, last night was the big giant blowout. So three days of, uh, oh my God, I'm so hungover. Wow, <laughs> I had no idea. I, I assume when you get in the sticks, you know, but yeah, that's, you know what? It's funny you say that because we drove up to the Redwoods one time. We expected to be a bunch around a bunch of like, you know, rednecks and stuff. And no, it was all a bunch of freaks like us, which was dope. It was like we went to the cafe and we're like, look at all these punkers and stuff. What is going on? This is awesome. It was like all artsy people and stuff. And we were and it's it that just kind of proves my point. You guys, you know what I mean? You yeah. just go somewhere to be where you, you know, to be together. That's yeah. That's terrific. I I really assumed it was the sticks and it was like, ah, uh, you know, but that's terrific. Um, Sergio, have you ever had any kind of, tell me your, your, your uh, experiences being both gay and comedian. Uh, I think the number one hurdle I encounter is a lot of straight men are willing to go on stage and make sexist, offensive, rape jokes, misogynist jokes. And then I go and I make one gay joke and they're like, dude, that's too much. That's too much. Oh my God. Yeah. If I'll call. <laughs> Are you kidding? Yeah. I'm like, so you're okay with the rape joke, but God, I said, I made out. And I didn't even like, it's not like I said I was penetrating someone that comes later. <laughs> um, but I said things like, you know, I've dated both men and women and they're literally deer in the headlights. So I've learned as a comic and I'm trying to fight this. Do I just come out and swing and whatever, or do I ease into it? which is what I decided to do for now. And then save the gay stuff to the end, like where I really, you know, start talking about fisting and stuff like that, you know, just casual Sunday things. <laughs> casual fisting. <laughs> so I've, I've noticed it's really interesting uh, with the audience. I do really well with very affluent people <laughs> and with like methods. <laughs> it's the middle of America. <laughs> Like I did a winery and it was, it was a pretty good show. They ate it up. And then I performed in Hemet, which is like, Oh my God. Exactly. 
But let me tell you, they were so observant. They were paying so much attention afterwards. They were literally pointing out a transition. I'm like, you're not an audience member. You're like a comedy connoisseur. Like you figured out my transition. Like, so it's interesting. So that's one thing I encounter a lot sometimes. And I have to get it out of my head though, because unfortunately it's, it's gotten in my head. Mm -hmm. And I notice I, I don't present the surgery you see at a bar on stage. Those are two completely different people. And people who know me, they're like, you're so reserved on stage. And like, it's, it's what happened to the surgery at the bar. I'm like, that surgery would get canceled before he even opened his mouth. So it's interesting how it's, I'm kind of navigating that. And I get hit on my straight men uh, quite a bit. Yeah, you get hit on by straight men. I mean, well, you know what I'm saying? Like, are you really straight if you're hitting on a dude? Like, I think I do believe that sexually some men are expressive. They could enjoy physical contact with other men, but emotionally be attracted to women. Like I find women yeah. attractive and, and I dated women when I was younger, but emotionally, I think I'd probably be attached more to a man, but like yeah. under the right circumstance and the right woman and everything, I was like, oh, I've been down this road. I know, you know. I don't know how oh. it's been a while since I've been there, but yeah, in San Francisco, I had a couple come up to me, which is funny because I have this couple. They came up to me like, next time you're in the Bay Area, you can stay with us. We have this great yard and we barbecue, we'll make uh, pina coladas. And I'm like, wait, pina coladas? I'm in. So <laughs> it is very funny the number of times some straight guy will come around me. He's like, oh, dude, you're really funny. And then I could like see it. I'm like, oh. You want penetration, I got it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. I think there's, there's, you know, everybody's got percentages of, you know, what they're kind of like want to flirt with or whatever. But I think it's it's who you fall in love with that, that kind of gives you an idea of what, yeah. what bin you want to be in or whatever. But I mean, More, sexuality yeah. is very fluid. So it's not like anybody's this or that, you know? But, and I think, I think when it comes to men who are curious, I happen to have the right balance of male female energy that they feel comfortable mm -hmm. saying, Oh, you're, I'm not threatening like, you know, some six, four, I'm going to bend you over and fuck you whether you like it or not type of guy. Uh, <laughs> but I still can't do that to you if you want me to. Um, oh, you'll, you'll buy him dinner first, right, Sergio? <laughs> exactly. Uh, so I, I think it's that. It's like if I had to count the number of times I've encountered a straight guy who is, that night the planets aligned, they noticed me, it's a high number. Yeah, interesting. So, yeah, somehow I was given that talent. No, I, I get that. I'm fiercely attracted to um, Joan Jett, but then who isn't? Oh. oh. But who isn't? You know who I have the biggest yeah. crush on right now? The biggest oh. boy crush, Jen Psaki, the press secretary. Oh my God, this woman is so fucking hot. Sure. The way she commands the, that conference room, just go to the White House, look at Jen Psaki, and they throw some dumbass question at her. She replies with a quick, smart, snarky reply. She's got red hair, it's slick. And then sometimes she wears primary colors, like a bright red or a bright <laughs> uh, blue. This woman is so hot. Oh my God. She's my crush right now. <laughs> Mental note, Google Jen Saki. Like, so, like the drink? Oh, okay. like the red head. What do you mean, though? I know what you mean. She's got, there's this fierceness about her that's just like, just, yeah, she's like a badass. Yeah. There's I, nothing sexier than a woman who just owns her power. Oh, she's fabulous. I love her. Wow, I just heard Grimes from downstairs go, yep, that's pretty. <laughs> her, her, her last name is P-S-A-K-I. Oh, yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, yeah, yeah, amazing woman. Oh, total crush. Nice, nice. So, um, uh, so, for well, okay. So, a couple things. Um, Sergio, you, you're. I'm gonna. We've talked a lot to Charity. I just want to ask you one more question. So, being down there in LA, um, uh, the the people. So, when I moved up to the Bay Area, I noticed how nice everybody was. And um, I remember going to clubs. I moved here when I was like 20. And I remember going to clubs and people were like, hi, how you doing? I'm like, why are you talking to me? Like, because in LA, like, you just don't talk to people. You're like, everybody, everything is like, fuck off. You know what I mean? Why are you talking to me? And 
um, so you're moving from like Bay Area to LA. Uh, have you, what have you experienced with the like feeling with the people with the, not to be mean to LA, but you know. Yeah. You know, I, I honestly, I did not like LA before I moved here. I would come here like maybe once every four years. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, how can people live here? So spread out, blah, 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 blah. the list was endless. Uh, and then I moved here and then two months later, the pandemic happens and everything is shut down. So my job was in the Westlake Village, which is, which is equivalent to San Jose. Okay. So I would have to commute mm -hmm. for an hour, hour and a half, depending on traffic. And I was like, I can't do that. So I moved to the Valley, which is like living in Colma, not even Daly City, like Colma. <laughs> oh my God, like the Valley? Yeah, oh exactly. Oh my God. <laughs> and uh, and it, so I moved to Hollywood in February of this year. So from my personal experience, LA has been nothing but friendly. I have met so many people, but I did a little work before I left San Francisco. I took a sheet of paper and I basically wrote down every fear, insecurity, doubt, heartbreak, you name it. Whatever I had in San Francisco, I went with my dogs under the Golden Gate Bridge and I took each sheet of paper and I lit it on fire. And I thought this hang up, this fear stays here. The heartbreak, the loneliness, whatever I experienced, because I moved there when I was 14. So I grew up and became an adult. I literally just wrote them all on a piece of paper, cut them all up and I would burn each one. And somehow that symbolism, I think when I arrived in LA, you didn't see the surgeon that was preoccupied in his head of like, oh, am I to this, to that, or to whatever? Because people feel the need to always share with me how I should behave. I've had this problem since I was a kid. You know what you should do. And I'm like, mm, pull my dick out of your mouth so you can actually speak. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you keep that for the end of this year set, right? When you do that for exactly. yeah. So LA um, for me has been friendly. I have met so many people. I've um uh there are things they do that I'm like, really, folks, we're doing this. But I've had a good time. They're all friendly. Um, there's different segments. <laughs> mm -hmm. The, you know, the lips, the hair, the lashes, that there's that segment where like, oh, yeah. oh my God, I can't put that much energy into an outfit. That's why I grow a beard most of the time, just so I don't have to deal with it. But I've met some really cool, fun people and hopefully they reflect what I'm doing at the moment. Nice, nice. That's, I also think it's interesting that you even, you even handle your emotions OCD, which is like very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I made a spreadsheet of all the things that were upsetting me. And I made a system to get rid of those things. And then that system has worked. Like, I'm like, oh my God, if I put as much thought into everything that you do, I would be so much further along in my life. Uh, that's actually terrific. I'm not making fun of you. I just think that's terrific. Um, I mean, it's funny. Someone said, you know, uh, you need to check your OCD. And I, I turned around and I said, you know, it's difficult to tell someone to check their OCD when their OCD is the reason why they've been successful. 100%. Like, if it wasn't for my OCD, none of the things I've accomplished would have worked. So I'm like, oh, it's hard to really control that, but I'm trying, I'm aware of it. And I try to only impose it on myself. Um, so, but yeah. Actually, I think that's great. And you know what, dude, whatever. I'm not putting you down. I just think that's awesome that you even oh, yeah. apply it in other parts of your life. I think that's great. Um, mm -hmm. um, Charity, um, you're, you, you know, being up there, you said it's very gay up there and everything's cool. And um, wait, wait, for some reason you're muted. I'm so sorry. Let me find out what's going on. Here. Oh, it's me. It's me this time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's very gay where I am. And uh, Southeast Alaska is very gay and very openly so. I think the further north you go, the more people have moved there to, uh, so they can just be psychopaths. Oh yeah. <laughs> wow. yeah. No idea. I've seen those movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just uh, very, very interesting people. Um, no, I- I, and you I, know I, all of them, obviously, because- Yeah, I, I know everybody in the state. <laughs> yeah, you know everybody, yeah. at least in your town. I yes. Mean, yeah it's i mean and so you you moved back and you uh did you move with anybody or did you just move there by yourself or i i moved here by myself uh and that was fun because when i left here i i left here with my wife mm. <laughs> came back oh, without her oh. <laughs> oh, wow. so that was a lot of explaining <laughs> 
I lost her. I don't know where I lost her. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Everywhere, but uh, it's all right. Uh, I did find her. She's in Boston. She's doing well. Um, yeah, but it, uh, it is, I actually love it. I love uh, being in this little city filled with lesbians and being single. It's delightful. <laughs> oh, that is one thing about down, you don't want to run burn through it too fast you know what yeah. I'm saying? start over you just start over once you get through all of them yes. mm -hmm. then you're recycling is that what oh happened? yeah okay. absolutely uh, that was one weird thing for me about going to the bay area and and being in san francisco which in my mind you know oh it's just going to be gay women everywhere but gay women in san francisco were not into me. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. And it was so refreshing to come back here and uh, be hit on. And <laughs> if I was gay, I'd be into you, Charity. Oh, gosh. Well, why aren't you gay? <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think it was? What do you, any, like, what do you think? Any idea? I think there were imposed. By the way, I don't mean to be weird, but that's it's kind of weird that you're doing this. I don't um, know. I think. <laughs> okay, go you're ahead. Put my finger on it. Can I know. I, I just I don't know why I noticed I, that. I don't me. know. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> there's, a, there's a group no. called the Beaches that has a has a song called Snake Tongue. Oh, oh that's God. what that is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sure. Sure. Uh, whatever. Um, yeah, so that's very interesting. I wonder why. There were a lot of social expectations in San, Fran in San Francisco for uh, gay women that I thought were really interesting. Um, that here, uh, I think this was so backwoods for so long and people just were, it was, it was a bunch of hippies uh, back in the day and everybody was just sleeping with everybody and nobody labeled anything okay. and um and somehow those the the social norms the expectations of how you're supposed to dress and look and act if you're a lesbian sometimes that happens naturally and sometimes you turn into this mm -hmm. and yes <laughs> uh yeah and it doesn't matter up here people aren't i i think it's just People there's don't. no like type or whatever there's yeah. not like typecasting you yeah mm -hmm. you're not trying to fit into that social club i think you know and, it, and that was self-preservation in other places including san francisco because san francisco historically was left well still is you've got the left and you've got the right and there's just no middle <laughs> and yeah and so you you had to form these big very insular clubs and i think they just became so standard that people just kept joining and joining rather than just doing whatever yeah i mean the kids are doing it but i'm an old lady so <laughs> well <laughs> obviously the 20 year olds aren't going to hit on me uh can i ask you uh this is a very personal question but um have you always been out or have you always been you or was there like a moment in your life i've known a couple people that it hit them, holy shit, I'm gay, like yes. a little bit later. And, um, you know, which is, which I was like, yay, I'm glad you finally found your, your shit. You know what I mean? But it's interesting. I always think it's interesting because then I have people in my life, like, you know, like my sister-in-law who is like one of my favorite people in the world. And she's, she was like six and she's like, I dig chicks. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so I always think it's interesting where there's like, you know, what, what was your experience with that? I grew up Mormon, so I'm originally oh, from Utah. Wow. And I oh, was God. taught by my mom. I was taught by my church. I was taught by my society this phrase that homosexuality is a sin second only to murder. And when the AIDS epidemic happened, my favorite uncle, my sweet uncle, uh, he and his whole community died of it. and there were no tears from my family because that was the justice of God. So there was 
absolutely no way for me to be gay, even though I was so gay, but <laughs> I was so in the closet that all throughout my twenties, uh, into my early thirties, I just thought, what's wrong with me? I'm not interested in men. <sighs> what could that mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, and I thought if I was gay, I would have known since I was a little kid because I'd heard that all the time. Mm -hmm. So I did not know until my, uh, till I was 35. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And I kissed a girl and I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you yeah. go. There you go. Sergio, same, same question. Have you, how, what was your experience like? Um, I didn't know it was gay, but I was in the second grade and I had the biggest crush on this boy named Gustavo. Um, I didn't know it was gay though. Oh, Gustavo, was, he's hot. I get that. I wanted to rub his shoulder because, you know, that's what you do. <laughs> that was poor play for us. Um, so I had no idea what gay was. Um, my grandmother started suspecting when I was a child that there was something special about me. So she would make extremely homophobic statements about gay people and that they were criminals and pedophiles and this is why God created AIDS. So by the time I started to face it and thinking, oh, wait a minute, I might be this person, I had to undo years of brainwashing. So the, I had a difficult time convincing myself uh, and I had a lot of guilt and shame around sex. Like, the concept of performing oral sex on someone was alien to me, like, because I had a mental block. And I was like, wait a minute, who doesn't want to date someone who gives them a mean blowjob? Like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so I, thanks to therapy, shock therapy, massage therapy, hypnotherapy, water therapy at this point, <laughs> I peeled away all those layers. Um, and I came out when I was 20. And I told my best friend, I did martial arts for 12 years, 16 years. So I told my best friend at the time and he had no idea. And I was like, are you kidding me? Nothing. No idea, really? <laughs> well, I, I can also safely say the Sergio I am now and the Sergio at 20, I've acquired some gay lingo, gay way of speaking, of expressing myself that was not part of the way I expressed myself in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and I was confused because I genuinely found women attractive. And I was like, oh, I can't be gay. Gay men don't like women. And I was, I had a girlfriend at 19 and I was like, oh, I'm not gay. I like, I like women. Um, but I started getting hit on by men at 16 in an unhealthy way. Like when A, I was 16, I grew up in an abusive home. So getting compliments was not something I was used to. And guys would like pull over in front of the bus stop and be like, hey, handsome, can I give you a ride? And I was like, no, crazy person. I would think to myself. And so that was a lot to get used to. Also, just the male energy coming at you, I wasn't ready to, for that. And I was like- Like a predator? That, I hate, yeah. As a male, I hate to say that, but yes, men had a very, oh. we have a very animalistic primal, like, oh, I see you, I wanna fuck you, let's go at it. And at 16, I was like, hey, I'm not used to getting that period. B, men, I got hit on by a cop in uniform. Like this is how bold men were. Like he gave me his business card and I was 16 years old. I mean, if you hit on me now, I know how to play with a gun. I'd be like, I can lose it. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But at 16, <laughs> I was like, I didn't even play with water guns. I was like, so I, my journey took a lot of having to get rid of the brainwashing, get rid of the Catholic guilt, get rid of the shame. Um, and now I'm totally free. Look at me. Nah. <laughs> you're free to be who you are, which is awesome. Huh? I said you're free to be who you are, which is awesome. Yes. I mean, I think I was also lucky because when I came out, I moved out when I was 16. So I was living on my own from 16 on. So when I finally came out at 20, I didn't have to sit down with my family and say, this is who I am. I didn't have to worry about them kicking me out or paying my bills. Like I was already doing that. And I've been doing it for four years. What? So, but I had to undo the brainwashing. The brainwashing, we don't realize as kids how those words are going to stay with us and filter how we see the world and worse, how we present ourselves to the world. And I say hats off to anyone who dated me in my twenties because I was a walking disaster, wow. disaster. And I'm like, and I wasn't even good in bed. So I, I, they cannot even say he was good in bed. No, it was terrible. 
terrible. <laughs> now I can say like, oh, okay, there's certain things that I can do now. So if you do have children, don't assume they'll be straight because they might be gay. And if you say one day you're going to get married and have kids, you're already planting that foundation in their head where they're going to feel inadequate. So in case there are any parents listening to this. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Wow, you guys, so you guys both had the whole um, charity. You must've gone through a lot of that too because Absolutely. you had the same kind of experience as a kid. I'm gonna say, uh, I absolutely am enamored with Sergio and became so, and I think we, we used to sit and talk and I think we just trauma bonded, didn't we Sergio? <laughs> a little I bit in San Francisco. <laughs> well, I, was, I didn't know she was a lesbian either. And then she's up on stage and she does this bit about dating women. I'm like, wait, is that a bit or is she really a lesbian? <laughs> Oh, my dad just said trauma bonded. My dad's here. My dad. okay. <laughs> you, mean, you mean when 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 she was sitting listening to you, Sergio, going, huh? <laughs> I remember I mean, the first that wasn't time. Your clue? That wasn't your clue. <laughs> well, the first time she did the lesbian joke on stage, I went up to her and I was like, so are you a lesbian or is that just like an, an act? And I, I didn't know she was a lesbian. I was like. <laughs> but I have the worst gaydar. I'm so bad with the gaydar. I mean, <gasps> oh, I really good yeah. gaydar too. I have it's the worst bad. gaydar. Worst. Terrible. Mine's really bad. It's really, I, really bad. I basically come to the conclusion if you're not giving me a blowjob, you're probably straight. Oh, your dad just said <laughs> Charity's going through a phase. She needs to meet the right man and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and by right man, he needs a vibrator. <laughs> I mean, the right man that's a woman is what yeah. I think. Yeah, that's I feel right. like a woman. Um, um, Jason, I, you know, I don't, I never have you chime in. Did you want to chime in at all? Or are you good? You good to go? You're fine. Cool. Well, I did see your doggy. <laughs> Jack, I love Jack. I know his doggy's so cute. Oh, um, as much as Jason. <laughs> Almost. Jason cut his hair too, which I don't mean to, I know Jason doesn't like to be in the spotlight, but uh, he looks really good. I wanted him to know. Um, so, uh, God, this is so interesting. I love talking to you guys. Um, and it's so good to see you both. It's been so long since I've seen you in real life. Um, we talked about, um, you know, a lot of stuff. You guys want to talk about any future endeavors that are happening? I know Charity, you talk about your theater and um, Sergio. What do you What do you got going, man? What's um, over there? Uh, let's see. Well, my shows in San Francisco are opening back up. So the first first one would be July twenty fourth. Funny foreigners, um, uh, <laughs> and I'm bringing three comics from LA. Nice. So I'm excited about that. Two of them are not touring comics, like they do colleges and stuff. So I'm excited to work with them. Um, I have a show in LA, uh, July 10th is my next one. Hopefully if it's successful, it'll be once a month. And I'm in the works of negotiating with another venue, but that's it. I'm not doing more than two shows a month. That's it. Not, not doing like I did in San Francisco. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I'm excited about that. I, I love the writing and creating process. I love it. Um, it was also nice to be in LA in the sense that I was a new person to the scene, not a new comic to the scene. In San Francisco, it didn't matter what I did. I had that scarred letter of, oh, he's new. So it didn't matter if I worked my butt off, sold out a show. It's like, oh, he's too new, which I know we're all gonna continue to grow no matter how long we do it. But in LA, it was nice to get booked simply by them seeing me do an open mic and not the, oh yeah, but he's still too new. Like it was like, oh, you're funny. Can you do our show? So the first bookings that I got in LA, they were all because I did open mics and there were bookers in the room. And that was a nice, yeah, that was like a nice, like, oh, okay, you're on the right track. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, things are opening up here significantly now. So I have to start doing the open mics. Um, you know, it's half hour to drive eight miles here. So you have to really, <laughs> you got to figure out what mic do I want to do tonight? And then you're pretty much stuck there. Um, and I still have a regular nine to five or nine to however long I work. Um, but yeah. So I'm excited. Hopefully I'll have two shows here, two in San Francisco. That should be enough stage time to get hey. better as a host. Well, don't forget to book me. Um, no. I, <laughs> Seriously. Public service announcement. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm like, I, yeah, um, uh, it's the LA scene, it sounds, it sounds insane. It sounds like it's, it's, it's 
lots of like full of like open mics and full of tons of people and um yeah interesting yeah i mean i think when in san francisco i did every and any open mic that was available in la i'm a lot more strategic i'm like oh i'm gonna go to this place i'm gonna go to this place and you know i i feel like when i first got here i started i hit the ground running like i was having about a show or two shows a week and then the pandemic hit and then everything kind of just stopped and i'm like oh man i almost have to reintroduce myself again so but a lot of people are in that spot i mean i was booked at the comedy store i still remember the date april 23rd but we shut down march 12th so oh. now i have to like oh. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. I was, oh. trust me. I had the Ice House, the Irvine Improv, and the Comedy Store booked. And I was opening for a comedian named Craig Shoemaker. He has yes. a character called the Love Master. I was opening for him. <laughs> and then everything just came to a complete, like everything. I was like, which we all know. So now I feel like I'm starting from scratch. And I've been able to write a lot of material. So I get to, you know, do that and see how it goes. Yeah. Damn. Oh, Sergio, that sucks. Oh, trust me. I was like, I mean, a lot of people experience worse scenarios, so I feel very lucky. Well, of course, but that's just like, you're like, yay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when uh, I looked at my calendar for early 2020, up to like mid 2020, and then when it became, I was like, ugh. But whatever. What yeah. Yeah. Uh, I hear you. I hear well, you. I'm a big comedy fan. She and is. that's how I met Erie and, you know, I, and I like computers and stuff. So a lot of them, you know, that were, and you said too, you guys zoom, you know, the ones that were, you know, up and on it. I love it's I, I've loved it. I've, I've seen so much great comedy and made so many great new comedy friends as a fan. Yeah. Oh, Danina well, is, is a hardcore comedy fan and she is, she's awesome. And she's, She's so like sweet about it too, which I love. She's like, it's awesome. The, I hate the comedy fans that are like, hi, you know what you should do when you do uh, And I'm like, you know, fuck you. Are you a fan or not? Like, just like, stop it. I like being a fan, but I couldn't do what you guys do. So I appreciate oh. it. Aw, oh, Denine. It's only, it's only, um, you know, the most, I have to tell you that when I uh, I was friends with a lot of the people at my friend's show, Beach Blanket, and the actors would come up to me and be like, you just stand up. We would never do that. I'm like, you're an actor oh, yeah. you're on stage. And they're no, like, no, 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 oh, no, no. Other people write for me. There's other people on the stage with me. There's everyone. Know yeah. And I was just like, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. It's a pretty insane thing to do to be a stand up comedian. I had never experienced true stage fright uh for anything i had ever done in my life uh giant venues tiny even one person performances never experienced anything close to the stage fright i felt with comedy i think it is a billion times harder than having somebody else write words for you and somebody telling you uh helping you and giving you feedback on how to move and what to do and uh, talking through your motivation. I mean, in theater, you've always got your, you've got all your coaches. Mm -hmm. You don't have that in comedy. It's you. You get up there. You fail. Yeah. So it, you, you uh, it's on a tight wire. I guess a tight wire. It's wider. you. You can't blame the director. You can't blame your character or the writer. Yeah. Well, exactly. I mean, you can blame the writer because it's you. You suck. You need to learn. Yeah, exactly. And it's not the audience. Don't blame the fucking audience. That drives me crazy. Never. Yeah, it's not, it's not the audience. audience. It's like, yeah, it might be a tough audience. But it was still you who didn't yeah. do it, you know? So it's like, That's true. Yeah. I had this conversation with someone and they're like, oh my God, I could never do what you do. And I'm like, you make it sound like I'm saving lives. Calm down. That <laughs> <laughs> is true. You it's are, but it's not, yeah. Sergio, you, but you might you be. Are. Yeah, but at you the same time, it does, it does require a certain level of self-delusion to be like, I am so, my words are so amazing that I'm going to be on stage and you guys are going to watch me. Um, <laughs> and you're going to involuntarily <laughs> laugh. That's the thing. You're going to involuntarily, I'm going to make you laugh, which is something you can't plan. You can't, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yes. yeah. Oh, that's, it's, actually, it's, that's a nice premise right there. I should write a joke around that. My job is to make you laugh 
even though you're not planning on laughing. You don't even want to laugh. You, I'm yeah. going to try and make you pee your pants because you look yeah. a little older than me. So <laughs> no, actually, I should probably like, write that down. That wouldn't be a bad bit, actually. As a comedian, um, I, I tell people, you I'm like, you me, <laughs> No to pants yet. <laughs> <laughs> but Sorry, I do tell you. people, I go, as a comedian, it's like you write it, you direct it, you produce it, you perform it. You bomb, it's all you. There is no one you can fall back on. And I also made it a rule for myself. If I bomb, it's me. It, you know, sometimes the audience is too drunk, too sober, too whatever. Those are fine. But if I start making an excuse for when I don't do well, it's not going to be healthy. So right. I was put it on myself. If I bomb, it was my fault. Yep. I do that too. I'm like, nope, I just, you got to be better. That's what yeah. I always tell myself. Then you just be better. Just be better. You need and, to be better. And the thing Write about better, comedy, perform yeah. better, do better. Like you charity, be charity, you I feel you, like, what did you want to say? Oh, no, I was going to say that same thing. It, uh, every, every situation when you're in a new room or a room where people are acting differently than other rooms, it's just a new, you have to learn that room. I mean, you just start constantly learning how to read each room. And, and, which is so exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and as someone who grew up, this is the audience. As someone who grew up in an abusive home where I had to learn to read the room, it's a skill that I have down. I just need to apply it to comedy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mine, <laughs> mine, came from, mine, mine came from customer service. You're, uh -huh. you, you, you do that thing where you, you're like, oh, really? You do that? I do that. Hey, okay, now we're bonding, and I can sell you the whole world, and you don't under. You didn't even know you signed your paycheck over to me. And then you're kind of, I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing customer service in the room when I'm, yeah. So that's, yeah. I, but you guys I get it and that's magic. Cause I've been to a lot of really bad shows, but I've been to a lot of just magical in the moment shows too. So yeah. let me tell you this, when you have a great show, you, you, it, it is, the best feeling it's like the it's like falling in love it really is the most insane thing when you get off the stage and you're just like fuck yeah like it is the most magical feeling um like i said it really it's like falling in love it's like amazing it's amazing the other thing, the other thing too that i am so grateful i didn't start comedy in my 20s because i like the emotional maturity to handle what is required because the first time i did punchline it was on my three month anniversary and luckily it went well. I could not sleep for three days. I was so high off of those eight minutes. And I remember thinking, oh, I see why performers sometimes turn to drugs because I cannot imagine a pop person who has a 30,000 arena filled people singing your song. How do you come down from that? Wow. Yeah. I was high after eight minutes. And this is someone who doesn't do that many drugs either. And then there are times where I bombed where I'm like, oh my God, I need to rethink my life. <laughs> oh yeah, oh my God. Can I just tell you a story? I did a Cobbs show and it was my first time at Cobbs and I fucking crushed it. And the thing about Cobbs is it's, it's a long, narrow club. And so the laughs were coming this way and then coming back, like I could oh. hear. And I was like, I got off stage, I was like, Fucking, I'm getting a fucking manager. I'm getting a Netflix special. I'm a fucking rock star. <laughs> <laughs> like an open mic, like two days later, and bomb my ass off. And I was like, I'm quitting. I suck. I don't even know why I do this anymore. It was just like insane. Like the, and I was talking to my best friend. And he's like, Wait, weren't you just like gonna get a manager two days ago? I'm like, Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. That's why I always say, I always say the easiest thing about comedy is quitting, basically. That's the easiest thing about it is just, I, you know? I, I also tell people, I said, comedy is by far, I, and I moved out at 16. Comedy is by far the hardest thing I've ever done and the most bipolar thing I have ever done. Yes. I uh, go at 7 p.m. and kill. And people are like, oh my God, you're so funny. Nine o'clock, the exact same set, nothing. And I'm nothing, like, nothing, right? Are you not hearing me? Yeah. Yeah. What did I do? Did I say it wrong? What yeah. happened? How did I do it? What happened? I, when did I lose? And then you that? forget the good. Yes, exactly. And you're like, oh. that is wiped away. That's gone. And just the shit show. That's the only thing in my head right now. Yep. Unfortunately, with comedy, we don't get better unless we bomb. So uh, yeah. if we want to get better, we have to bomb. And it's like, 
and it's you know it's like if I've done a few shows and I haven't bombed, I'm like, uh oh, this is show, uh-oh. and they're all good. What's <laughs> around the corner? So when I produced my first show, the odds are people, coming around. The odds yeah, are coming around. <laughs> uh, 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 my cousin showed up and some friends showed up, and I remember thinking, oh my god, I've heard these horror stories where they're like, yeah, my family flew in and my agent was there and my manager was there and I ate ass the entire time, and I was like, you make it sound like it's a bad thing, but in this <laughs> interview. <laughs> And I was like, <laughs> so I had that thought for a second of like, oh my God, Sergio, what if this is that night that you hear every comedian talk about? Like your friends are here, your relatives are here. Not all my family, only like one cousin showed up, but I had that kind of anxiety for a little bit. Luckily it didn't happen. So Yay. it's around the corner. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and what I always like to say is uh, when you bomb, make sure you get right back on that stage and bomb again. So, <laughs> um, uh, Charity, any any la- last thing you want to say or leave us with, or it sounds so 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 final. I'm sorry. Like, um, and by more. the way, Jason, thank you so much for donating. I just realized I didn't even put my sign up. Here's my oh oh, oh, oh shit. no. <laughs> hold on a second. I, uh, I need uh, wait, hold on a second. I'm so sorry. That's just, I'm a terrible, terrible host, but we already know that. Okay, here's, if you guys want to donate to our lovely, lovely panel tonight, please go ahead and, and Jason and Deneen, thank you so much. Always, I always. I love your show. Um, oh, thank you, baby. And I love, I love my, 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 new, unofficial my new loves, Charity and Sergio. They're oh. awesome. <laughs> They're awesome. So Charity, any last things you'd like to say on our way out here? Come, come to um, Skag, Alaska. <laughs> definitely come up to Skagway. It's, uh, it is, uh, we're getting people this year who are just coming here independently and my God, how much fun they're having. They have the whole town to themselves and everybody's so happy they're here. And you have but, the midnight um, sun now, right? I'm a sunshine yeah. girl. I love yes. it. I wouldn't it want to live in it, but I loved it when I was there. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of fun. All I want to say is, um, it's Deneen? Yes. Um, Are you sure? Are you sure you're not gay? I mean, I'm just saying, I'm single. (laughs) (laughs) I wish, hey, believe me, I'm a lifelong single. I wish. I wish. Okay. (laughs) I was born this way. It's a a podcast. nap, Charity. (laughs) All right. Okay. Um, Sergio, anything you want to say just on your way out the door here? Um, the best advice someone gave me, when in doubt, spit it out. <laughs> and that is Sergio Novella. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for joining us on another <laughs> you guys. podcast. Awesome. Uh, Sergio Novella, please catch him in LA or San Francisco. Charity Palmery, please catch her up in the sticks in Alaska, the funnest little <laughs> town in Alaska. And uh, I am Erie Diamond, your host. Thank you guys so much for joining in. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much. You Any last, me. I know you wanted to say something, Sergio, just say it. Oh, I was gonna say, uh, uh, if you wanna follow, find where I am, because also in LA, by the way, before you even book you, they're like, what's your social media engagement? And I'm like, there you go. <laughs> are you serious? I'm like, so now I have to like, I'm being more active on Instagram because they literally ask and they check your engagement. So Sergio the Comic is everything. TikTok, Grinder Scruff, Christian Maple. Facebook and Instagram. Grindr is not social media. Grinder. never mind. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, by the way. I mean, to me it is. (laughs) I mean, I I I forgot. You said through customer service, you're able to connect with the audience. I service my audience, which is a little different. Oh, oh wow. the it whole audience. Out. Go to that, Sergio's show. That sounds show. exhausting, friends. That sounds exhausting. <laughs> hey, Charity, do you want to plug any, any of your TikTok or your grinder or any of your... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to keep...